For this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the lupus or SLE examination. I'll start off by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Evan Graham. Is it all right if I perform the lupus examination on you? Perfect. And then I go and wash my hands. Before starting the examination, I always want to make sure the patient's stable and doesn't need acute medical attention uh, before moving, proceeding. From there, I'll start off by getting vitals. Uh, just things that you could note uh, with lupus. Um, they can be febrile. Uh, they can be tachycardic, um, tachypneic, hypoxic, from any uh, cardiopulmonary dependent syndromes uh, going on. Um, and then another thing that you just want to note uh, is their BMI from chronic inflammation uh, could be lowered. Uh, and then you can note any kind of findings of uh, a cushionoid appearance um, from chronic kind of steroid use. Uh, and I'll put a link to uh, my Cushing's exam um, at the bottom of this page uh, if you do want to refer to that for further examination. From there, going on uh, to inspection, uh, starting off with uh, the head and neck, things that you can note. Uh, so you can note any kind of uh, alopecia from, from hair loss. And you especially see this um, where there's discoid lesions as well that you can look for. So discoid lesions are uh, a chronic uh, scale or plaque-like lesions uh, that are usually round uh, information. So you can note that. Um, you can note facial telangiectasias. You can note uh, a mallet rash or the butterfly shaped rash that's, that's over the cheeks um, and coming over uh, the, the nose as well. And then of note, um, you have uh, the nasolabial sp uh, sparing with this kind of rash. From there, um, with the eye examination, things that you can note is contractival injections, and you can also get uh, keratoconjunctivitis uh, sicca um, from the dry eyes that you can get uh, with the sicca symptoms and uh, you can get some scarring over the sclera there. Uh, with an ophthalmoscope, you can go in and look, and you can look at the retina, and you can see any kind of cotton wool spots uh, that you'd see with a concurrent kind of vasculitis. Uh, you can note uh, a greatly inflamed eye from any kind of scleritis or episcleritis, and then you wanna note any kind of painful eye uh, associated with an anterior uh, uveitis um, that can be associated with a hypopion as well. Um, from there, looking in the nose and in the mouth, if you can open up your mouth as well, you can note any kind of uh, painless ulcers. Uh, rarely you can get actually nasal perforations. And then you can get plaques as well, um, white plaques uh, that can build up in the mouth. From there, just cervically, you can feel for any kind of uh, lymphadenopathy as well um, during the cervical lymph node exam, which I don't notice on this. Moving on to the hands. Um, so with the hands, uh, you can get an inflammatory atropathy, very similar in distribution uh, to rheumatoid arthritis, uh, affecting mainly the small joints, usually symmetric as well, commonly affecting the MTPs or the, the um, PIPs. Um, differentiating this from rheumatoid arthritis is this is a, a non-destructive or non-erosive uh, um, inflammatory arthritis. So the big features of it is all the deformities that you have will actually be reducible. So. You can get a swan neck deformity um, like this or a boutonniere's deformity like that as well, but those will be reducible. And then commonly you get ulnar deviation as well of the fingers that can be reducible as well. From there, just looking at uh, the nails, um, things uh, that you can note. Um, so you can see uh, periungal um, infarcts as well um, and uh, dilation of the capillary beds of any kind of um, vasculitis or if they're anti-cardiolipin positive as well. To actually visualize this you need an ophthalmoscope and, and you put some oil actually on here and you, and you can look at the nail beds for dilation of the small capillary beds there. Um, other things that you can note on the fingers, so you can note any signs of gray nodes um, where from cold exposure um, you get either pale, blue um, uh, lesions as well. Um, you can note any kind of uh, finger infarcts, um, any kind of palpable uh, purpura, any nodules from the concurrent vasculitis. And along with the vasculitis, you can note um, libido reticularis or kind of prominent um, vessels uh, coming along here as well from vasculitis. Um, other things, so you want to note any kind of maculopapular rash that develops um, and it's usually um, in photosensitive areas uh, from light exposure along there. Um, as well. Okay. So after examining the hands and arms, you can move on to a neurological exam. You'd want to do a full screening neurological exam, including cranial nerves, muscle movements, um, uh, any kind of uh, sensory deficits um, from 
um, any kind of, you can get a mononeuritis uh, multiplex uh, along with this. Um, from there, cardiopulmonary exam. So in a cardiac exam, I want to auscultate um, the heart completely listening in all four areas and things that you want to listen for. So you want to listen for if there's any kind of murmurs from a concurrent valvular abnormality from neurantic uh, uh, endocarditis. And then you want to note any kind of uh, friction rubs uh, because of pericarditis and uh, any kind of uh, decreased heart sounds or findings of uh, tamponade. Additionally, you can do a full kind of heart failure and pulmonary hypertension exam, which I'll link as well um, in, this, in this video, so you can uh, examine for that as well. Pulmonary-wise, things you want to note, if you can just uh, turn sideways for me. So you want to listen to the lungs. You want to note any kind of um, friction rub as well with the breathing in and out because of any kind of, or any kind of pulmonary fibrosis, if there's any kind of crackles. You want to note kind of decreased air entry to the bases. Um, with uh, dullness to percussion, um, decreased tactile fremitus uh, because of uh, uh, effusions that you can get. And then you could also note uh, just decreased air entry or decreased uh, diaphragmatic expansion uh, from associated shrinking lung syndrome. After that, abdominally wise, if you're able to lie down for me again. The abdominal exam, things that you can note. Um, so you could examine for splenomegaly as well. I'll just do that with Castell sign. You can refer to my full video um, for how to examine for splenomegaly, but if you could take a deep breath in for me. Perfect. If that's dull at all, it'd be a positive finding, and then I'd go on to a full splenomegaly examination. And then you can just feel the, the stomach if you have any tenderness. And you can note any kind of generalized tenderness from a, a sterile uh, peritonitis that you can get. After that, things that you can just note kind of throughout and on the lower extremities. Um, is any kind of inflammation from an associated um, uh, paniculitis as well. Um, and that concludes uh, my SLE examination.